So hello friends, welcome to all of you. So I am very sorry because I have not updated any new videos on my YouTube channel because I have some pending works and uh, I am about to finish my PhD degree. So that is why I am, I am unable to find free times. In this tutorial I am going to cover on the boundary condition and this is very important topic. So I will suggest you to watch this tutorial from beginning to last. Here I am going to explain everything starting from the geometric mesh to uh, we will go to the how this boundary condition has been structured in the open form. So everything I am going to explain from basic to advanced in this tutorial. So I will suggest you to watch till end to locate everything whatever I member functions or whatever the classes I am explaining. So try to locate by yourself also and in upcoming tutorials I am just going to uh, develop new boundary condition every kind of boundary condition i am going to create from the basic type of boundary condition everything we are going to cover in this coming series on the boundary condition so this will take two three more tutorials only dedicated to the boundary condition so please stick to the my youtube channel and please share with friends also so let's start to, and uh, as i have already discussed about the c++ tutorial in last few lectures and I have also uh, discussed that how this object registry work in open form. And even I have already told you that how this class definition and how this function definition has been uh, arrived in the open form. So this aspects I have already discussed. So here first tutorial I am going to begin with the boundary condition. So whatever C++ basics we have understand. Now I think that using those understanding we can uh, create our own boundary condition. Okay, so this is why I am going to start with the boundary condition tutorial. So here I will first start with discussing that how this open form creates the boundary condition and then uh, after discussing the every functions and every classes related to the boundary condition then we will go to in uh, maybe in next tutorial I will go, go to the discuss that how you can create your own library of the boundary condition. So, so if I told you that any open form case you will talk about, it will consist of the internal field and what is the second one is the boundary field. Okay, so if you have watched my uh, tutorial related to the messings, then you have just seen that every whatever the test case you are going to run, there will be one internal fields and second there is a boundary field. Okay, so these two things is always always necessary. In internal fields, you are going to solve the you are going to solve the whatever field you want to solve. You are going to solve the internal field using the solver, whatever solver you are using. Okay. Now the boundary fields that you need to specify before using the solver. Okay. So generally this boundary field is available in the zero folder. So if I show you any test case, there will be three folders you can find. That is the zero, constant and the system folder. In zero folder, whatever the boundary condition is available you specify in the zero folder. Okay. So internal fields we use the solver and boundary field we uh, derive our own boundary conditions. Okay. But if I start with the standard boundary condition available in open form, so there are different kind of boundary condition available in open form as you can see here that. So like a basic boundary condition. So whenever you apply the Trichelet or Neumann type of boundary condition or Robert type of boundary condition, this boundary condition you can find in the basic folder of the open form. So I will show you in the uh, open form test directory also. But here I am just going giving you basic brief about the what are the boundary condition are available. So Dirichlet type means what is the Dirichlet method? Means that some fixed value. If you are providing some fixed value, that is the Dirichlet type of boundary condition. What is the Neumann type of boundary condition when you are specifying the zero gradient or some fixed gradient then you can say that that is the Neumann type of boundary condition and Robin means the mix of this Trichelet and Neumann if you are applying the both type of boundary condition like you can say that the conductive heat transfer is equal to convection heat transfer so this is kind of a Robin type of boundary condition okay so uh, one side you are applying the uh, gradient value and another side you are giving the some uh, fixed value that is the S T minus 
the internal film that is kind of a mixed type of bonding condition. Now in basic also this there are uh, other than basic there is a coupled type of bonding condition. Okay, so then when you are using the some information from one page to another page that is called as the coupling of two pages and that is kind of a coupled type of bonding condition. Now there is another folder that is a constant. So after basic there is one folder that is a constant folder. Okay. So whatever the bonding condition available in that folder that you can say that it is, it is, it is being derived from the coupled type of bonding condition. Okay. So the coupled is a one type of bonding condition available in the basic folder. Okay. So for example there is a one bonding condition that is called as the cyclic type of bonding condition. Okay. Now there is another folder we will find that is a derived folder. Okay. So whatever the folders other than this coupled type of boundary condition, whatever boundary condition you are going to derive using the Dredge, Newman and Robin bond type of boundary condition, all those derived boundary condition are called as the derived boundary condition. So let me just summarize. There is one basic folder. So whatever the boundary condition that is related to the Dirichlet, Neumann, Robin type at coupled type that all comes under the category of the basics. Then there is a constant type of boundary condition. So which are only derived from the coupled type of boundary condition that we are going to call as the constant. And then finally there is a drive type of boundary condition. So other than this coupled type of boundary condition, if you are using other basics kind of boundary condition to derive another boundary condition, those will be called as the drive type of boundary condition. So but if you want to find those bonding condition, you can go to those just this location. Okay, so this source folder, then finite value, and then fields. Then after that, you will go to the every patch fields. You are going to find every kind of bonding conditions available there. Okay, so this is the summary I've given. Now, what is this every patch field? There will be one separate folder that is every patch field. So every patch field is the base class. Okay, so this is the base class that should be inherited in any other type of boundary condition. So this every patch field is need to be derived in every classes if you want to create a boundary condition. Okay. So let me just show you this available boundary condition into the open form terminal. Here we are already present in the open form 6 environment. Okay. So if I type ls and now if I type form src, so it will let me go to the src folder then I can type finite value so I will already go to the finite value folder now here I can I can type the fields and then I can type the every patch field so here you can see that there are four folders is present that is the basic constant derived and every patch field now I can list some of the uh, folder of this basics also. So, sorry, so here I have to again go to this folder, the MP patch fields, and then I can list the sum of the bonding condition available in the basics. So, you can see here that this coupled is available here. You can find out the fixed gradient, okay, that is the kind of Newman boundary condition. This fixed value that is kind of the Dirichlet boundary condition, and this mixed, you can say that that mix is related to the Robin type of boundary condition. Okay, this zero gradient is also a related to the type of the Newman type of boundary condition. Okay. And here you can also see that this is the coupled is present in the basic directory. Okay. Now if I type the constant boundary condition. Okay. So here you can see that I have given one example that is cyclic and this is cyclic AMI cyclic sleep so this these are the boundary condition that is being derived from the coupled type of boundary condition so this coupled type of boundary condition is being derived in this boundary condition so where uh, if you need to uh, just uh, share the values between the two patches then this type of boundary condition is being used okay so here whatever the cyclic or cyclic ami you are using so you will find that here we are going to use some information from one patch to another patch so this is the basic criteria of this coupled type of boundary condition if it is being derived in another boundary condition now if i go to the derived folder so you can see here that there are different uh, so, uh, different boundary condition available so these are the derived boundary condition from the basics 
okay this is the basic boundary condition so other than coupled whatever the boundary condition we are going to use to derive this boundary condition it is uh, called as the derived type of boundary condition to understand it from user perspective then we will go to the coding perspective so let me first copy some tutorial here so here you can see that one test case i have copied here okay now you can go to the zero folder and here all the boundary condition has been defined so if i open so these things you can observe that there are this is pressure is the volume scale quantity okay and the internal field which is given as the uniform field okay so the internal fields means that whatever the values you are given that internal cells have the value equal to zero okay so this is the initial condition so when you start solving the equations the initial condition is start with the zero of the pressure field okay similarly if you open the u this is the volume vector field here you can see that the internal fields are given a value equal to zero zero now this boundary fields are the values you are going to provide on a different boundary patches similarly you can see that here in the different boundary patches you are providing the different values but till now we have idea about that how this boundary condition are being arranged in the open form okay so when you are going to solve the equations in open form so there is the internal fields and there is the boundary fields and you are specifying you are solving the equations for the internal fields and you are going to give a boundary condition for the boundary patches okay that is why the boundary boundary field boundary condition is required to find out the value for a boundary patches okay now for internal fields there is a cell centers and for the boundary patches there is a phase centers okay so now let's understand that how this uh, internal fields and the boundary patches are correlated to each other okay. there is the this is the internal fields and there is the boundary fields okay now this boundary field can be two types that is the fp patch field and second one is the point patch fields okay now this both things that is the internal fields and the boundary fields when we collectively uh, call this bold field that is internal field and the boundary field then it is called as the geometric fields okay so let me uh, just to give you summary what i want to say that so first you create the mesh and the for every mesh you are going to specify different fields like that is the velocity is one one field one kind of the volume vector field pressure is the one kind of the volume scalar field temperature is there so this different volume scalar fields or volume vector fields these are related to the mesh okay now this mesh has the cell centers and there is the boundary patches okay so similarly this fields since this fields are related to the this meshes so that's why this fields are also related to the cell center and the boundary patches okay now when these fields whatever the fields were defined that is related to the internal field and boundary fields when you combine these two fields that is internal field and the boundary fields then it is the it is the related to the one template that is called as the geometric field okay so we are also going to discuss about this geometric field and then we will go to the this fp patch field and the point point patch field okay so here you can see that at i already written on the slide that the geometric class temp geometric field class template provides the member function that simpl simplify the formulation and update the boundary condition so we can say that everything about the boundary conditions start from the geometric field okay so some of the member functions it specify that is the geometric field specify and that we are going to see in the upcoming slides and i will also show you some examples so so second line you can say that this is the boundary fields and the internal fields together form the geometric field that is the idea about the geometric field okay now so i told you that every field is related for the say internal cells and the boundary patches okay now let me give you an example suppose we have a one a one line mesh because suppose we are working for a line mesh 
okay so if it is a line mesh then there will be some field suppose that is a line field so the correlation between the line mesh and line field is given by the geometric field so geometric field is a class okay so that provides a template for the different kind of the tensors okay different kind of tensors and that tensors is associated with the mesh and the association of the tensor with the mesh is provided by the geometric field that is the idea about the geometric field okay so for example if you, you have the scalar quantity that have the uh, rank of the simply you can say that one rank okay so if you have a vector quantity so you can say that that is the two rank of the tensors okay similarly there can be uh, many rank tensors you can work with them in open form okay now this different rank tensors is associated with the mesh and that association is provided by the geometric field that is the whole idea about the geometric field now some of the different models for the geometric field i have given here so for example if we start with us working with the cell centers okay so there are this is the naming that is the volume star and the field okay so if it is the scalar field then you can say that the volume scalar field and if it is the vector field then we can say that the volume vector field okay now remember here that this this is the quantity that is the related to the cell center of the complete mesh but at the boundary boundary patches you cannot have a cell center so that's why here we are providing a boundary condition that will work for the face centers okay so different boundary patches has the face centers and these are the quantities that is the volume scalar field and volume vector fields these are going to the work for the face centers so, so you provide some boundary conditions and using those boundary conditions this volume scalar field or volume vector fields are going to be calculated on those face centers of the boundary patches okay now second one is the face center so some of the quantities that is defined for the all the face centers for a given mesh if a cell is formed there is a different number of faces that is going to form a cells okay suppose you are giving taking a one cube and the cell center is called the cell centers but this cube is formed formed by the six faces okay so this six faces have the face centers and now whatever the quantity that is associated associated with this face center that will be called as the surface star field this is the naming and one example is the surface scalar field okay so generally in open form there is a uh, mention of the surface scalar field fields associated, associated with the points this is the naming and these are the some examples here like the point scalar field or the point vector field okay so generally this point scalar field or point vector field generally uh, required when you work with the work with the dynamic mesh motion okay so generally this kind of the scalar quantity or vector quantity is required when you are going to work for the dynamic mesh motions so here we are going to just focus on the face center and cell center and maybe in uh, coming tutorials i will just uh, try to develop a one boundary condition using this point scalar field or the point vector field okay